Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 23 of the chapter Solutions. We have been discussing the colligative properties and I told you about all the four colligative properties. In the previous video, that is in video number 22, I introduced the fourth colligative property that is osmotic pressure. And we understand that osmosis is a process where you have a solution and a solvent or two solutions across a semi-permeable membrane. When such a thing, such a situation occurs, the solvent molecules, they cross through the semi-permeable membrane from a lower concentration of solution to a higher concentration of solution. So what is the condition for osmosis to occur? That the two solutions should have different uh, so, uh, what concentrations and therefore the semi-permeable membrane, the presence of semi-permeable membrane is essential for osmosis to occur. And now the difference between the concentrations of the two solutions decides whether osmosis takes place or not. So based on this, we have three categories of pairs of solutions. That is when according to how osmosis would occur. The first category is of the pair of solutions across the semi-permeable membrane is isotonic solutions. Iso means the same and tonic is for osmotic pressure. When you have two solutions across a semi-permeable membrane which have the same osmotic pressure, they are said to be isotonic solutions. When the concentrations or the osmotic pressures of both the solutions is equal, which one will move towards which? None will move towards the other one. And therefore, we say in an isotonic solution, the concentrations are approximately the same. So there is no reason for the solvent to move from one solution to the other. And therefore, osmosis does not occur. To explain these three categories of uh, solutions according to osmotic pressure, we take the example of blood cells. You have blood cells and I told you in the previous video that the concentration of blood cells or the osmotic pressure of blood cells, uh, if you take a solution of 0.9% sodium chloride, that has the same osmotic pressure as that of blood cell or you could say almost the same type of concentration irrespective of course of the solute because it's a colligative property. It doesn't matter what solute it is. So the concentration of blood and 0.9% sodium chloride solution is the same and hence they are said to be the two are isotonic. And since they are isotonic, if you put blood cells in this solution of sodium chloride, that is 0.9% sodium chloride solution, nothing happens. They remain intact and they remain fine. They neither shrink nor do they expand since no osmosis occurs. The next is a hypertonic solution. Now, out of the two solutions, let us take one as the main one. Now, in comparison to the main one, is the concentration of the other one lower or is it higher? Decides these other two categories, that is hypertonic and hypotonic. Now, if you take one of these solutions as your main solution, that is the solution whose osmosis you are checking. For example, you may take a grape and you may start thinking that whatever is inside the grape, that is your area of interest or a blood cell, like we did in the case of isotonic solutions. So if you took a blood cell and you compare the solution, that other solution, whether it has concentration higher or lower, will decide whether it is hypertonic or hypotonic. Hyper means higher and hypo means lower. So a solution which has more osmotic pressure or more concentration than the solution that you, are, you have your focus on inside the semi-permeable membrane, that kind of a solution which has a higher concentration is known as a hypertonic solution. I told you that blood has the concentration equal to 0.9% sodium chloride. So if you have a solution which has a concentration higher than 0.9% sodium chloride, in that case, osmosis would occur. First of all, in the case of isotonic solutions, osmosis does not occur. But in hypertonic and hypotonic solutions, osmosis would occur. But why do we want to know whether it is hypertonic or hypotonic? Because this will decide the direction of osmosis. So if you have a solution that is hypertonic, so if we took blood cells and we put them in a solution which had more concentration than 0.9% mass upon volume percentage of sodium chloride, we find that this is a hypertonic, the concentration is higher. And we know that osmosis always occurs where the solvent moves from lower concentration to higher concentration. So you have put the blood cell in a, in a solution of higher concentration. So the 
solution inside the blood cell, the concentration inside the blood cell is less than the concentration outside the blood cell inside the sodium chloride solution. So what will happen? Solvent always moves from lower concentration to higher concentration. Therefore, the solvent, that is water molecules, will start moving out through the blood, through the semipermeable membrane, and they'll come out in the sodium chloride solution. What will happen as a result of this? The blood cell, which it will shrink, and it would result in the causage of shrinkage of the blood cell. So let me just read it. A hypertonic solution is a solution with higher osmotic pressure or concentration. For example, a solution of sodium chloride which is greater than 0.9% sodium chloride in comparison to a blood cell will be hypertonic and it would lead to the shrinkage of blood cells. Then we come to the third category that is a hypotonic solution. A hypotonic solution would be one which has concentration less than the concentration of the solution that you are focusing on or the, the solution that you are uh, keeping as solution one. So again, taking the example of blood and sodium chloride, if you took 0.9% sodium chloride, you would have obtained an isotonic solution. If you used a sodium chloride solution with a greater concentration, it led to the movement of water molecules outside the blood cell because the, the concentration inside the blood cell was less and the concentration outside the blood cell was more. Therefore, the solvent moved outwards. But if the solution on the outside has lower concentration and inside the blood cell now you have higher concentration and osmosis always occurs from lower concentration to higher concentration. So now in this situation the uh, water molecules or the solvent molecules will start moving inside the blood cell, they start moving into the blood cell which would lead to a swelling of the blood cell and if the difference between the concentrations is really large then there is a possibility of bursting of the blood cells. So this was the different categories of uh, solutions based on osmotic pressure. Isotonic solutions, hypotonic solutions and hypotonic solutions. Now let us come to an application of uh, this knowledge of osmotic pressure. But before we come to this very important application, let us understand what reverse osmosis is. So the next topic here is reverse osmosis. We know that the direction of osmosis is from lower concentration to higher concentration. The solvent molecules move. And what was osmotic pressure? I told you when you apply pressure on that side towards which the water, the uh, solvent molecules are moving, if you apply pressure in the opposite direction which is equal to the pressure with which these molecules are entering, you will be able to stop osmosis. And that minimum amount of pressure which has to be applied to stop osmosis is known as osmotic pressure. What would happen if you applied pressure greater than osmotic pressure? Now, this is a semi-permeable membrane and you have salt water from the ocean and a tank of plain water. What will happen? Normally, what would happen? Since this is plain water, osmosis should occur in this direction right osmosis should occur in this direction that is from fresh water that is from solvent towards salt water right but what do we do we manipulate this process we start applying we have a piston here an opening here and we start applying pressure to the salt water instead of applying pressure to the to the fresh water we start applying pressure to the salt water what happens as a result of this this solvent molecules which were entering in this direction we apply so much pressure that first it becomes equal to osmotic pressure so no molecules can enter anymore so osmosis stops occurring in the first step then over and above that osmotic pressure we apply more pressure and when we do that we force the solvent now a semi-permeable membrane does not allow solute particles to pass through it it only allows the solvent particles to pass through it. So when you apply more pressure to it, what will happen? The solvent molecules will now be forced to pass through the semi-permeable membrane towards the tank which has only water. And what would happen as a result of this? The salt water from the ocean, the salt remains and you separate out clean water by this process. And Osmosis was supposed to occur in this direction, but now what is happening? Osmosis is still occurring, but it is reverse osmosis. 
because osmosis is a spontaneous process but reverse osmosis is being forced it's a pressure it is a process that is being forced and that is done by applying pressure in the opposite direction so this was reverse osmosis and how is it useful as i just explained this to you if you take in, in countries where you do not have as much river water or spring water how do you use drinking water you only have oceans in such a situation most countries what they do they take this water from the oceans they put it through a semi permeable membrane which is usually made up of cellulose acetate which has been supported which has been put over some support so that it acts as a sturdy semi permeable membrane through which you have a tank of a uh, tank full of uh, ocean water that is uh, saline water and the saline water through when you pressurize it on the other side instead of solvent water moving into it the water starts moving outside the saline water leaving behind the salt so this process is known as the desalination of ocean water desalination we know ocean water is saline or sea water is saline and the removal of the salinity is known as the desalination so it is desalined and the desalination of ocean water is done and you get pure water by reverse osmosis so this is a very important application of os osmosis or osmotic knowledge of osmotic pressure or reversing that process manipulating it a little bit in order to be beneficial to mankind so let me just read what i wrote here the direction of osmosis can be reversed by applying pressure larger than the osmotic pressure to the solution side normally the solvent should move into the solution but by applying pressure greater than osmotic pressure when you apply pressure equal to osmotic pressure the osmosis stops and when you apply pressure greater than osmotic pressure reverse osmosis starts this is used in the desalination of sea water so this was osmotic pressure theoretical part now in the next video i do a couple of problems based on osmotic pressure and if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now